guys, welcome to a new Project Camp update. It's early in the morning because we're gonna go to a cork factory where they're gonna harvest the cork in a farm and, and the factory where they're gonna produce it into useful things. So we're gonna see how the process works. Should be exciting. <laughs> So yeah, like Dave said before, it's 6 in the morning, so the streets are still empty. The landscape is beautiful, covered in thick fog, and the early sun just started to reach out her first golden sunbeams. We are making our way in Dave's shaky van on the highway. Hello. A two and a half hours drive is waiting for us. First stop is the cork factory called Sofalka located somewhere in the countryside between Project Camp and Lisbon. There we're gonna meet Charles. He runs a company called Corklink, who is a local supplier for a variety of cork products. He was kind enough to invite us for a tour around the cork tree farms and the factory. We met him on the parking place of the factory, jumped in his car, cause it's a bit faster, and continue further south to the cork tree fields. So. Let's see what is waiting there for us. Seems like you're in Africa. It's a funny bike. <laughs> There's the lions, giraffes. Dave, where are we now? So we're currently at a cork field with a lot of cork trees and we're gonna see how they're gonna get harvest, how it works and uh, yeah, what a day of a cork, cork harvester looks like. Why is it shaking so much? Uh, we're in the back of a pickup truck because uh, well, hard to access. <laughs> All right, so we're now at the cork harvest place. Here we have Charles. He's going to give us a little bit of a tour about how the harvesting process works. Well, um, we're in uh, southern Portugal here, where most of the cork trees grow in Portugal. And during the summer months, the uh, whole of the cork, cork forest in Portugal have their bark stripped. The guys we can see working here travel around the central and southern Portugal taking the bark off the trees in teams. So you can see that the, the technique they use is they have an extremely sharp axe and they bash at the tree to just cut the bark. And they have to hit the bark with just the right amount of strength so that the bark gets cracked open but they don't damage the membrane that's inside the bark covering the tree. Because if you damage that membrane, then the tree can die. So these guys, it looks like they're just smacking away at the tree, but actually it's a finely judged amount of force that they're using to hit the trees that the bark will fall off naturally. And funny enough, each of these guys, their axe is their own uh, personal axe, and they treat it like a, their, their pride and joy. It's like a concert vi violinist with their violin. They won't let anyone else touch their axe and they sharpen it all day long. And it has just the right weight for them so they know exactly how hard to whack the tree when they're taking the, the cork off. So the cork can only be removed every nine years. 
because otherwise you don't have enough thickness in the cork to be able to use it to making wine corks. And the joy of cork is that taking this bark off the tree does no damage at all to it and the cork will grow back so nine years later you can harvest the cork again. And in fact some of these trees around here are 200 years old and they've been harvested every nine years for, for 200 years. Nothing happens quickly in cork forests. So um, a young tree like this one here, which is maybe um, four or five years old, is not ready to give up um, quality cork um, until it's 15 or 20 years old. So the first, first um, seven or eight years, the cork tree is just left to grow. And then afterwards, you can see this tree here. This has been harvested once. So it's had its, had its first harvest and this is the regrowth. You can see the original cork is here, which hasn't been harvested at all. So this is the regrowth here. The first harvest of the cork is called virgin cork, and it's extremely resinous, and you can't use it to make wine corks. So that's generally used to make um, expanded cork. The second harvest is generally uh, reasonable quality cork, but it's not the best quality. The best quality comes in the third, fourth, fifth harvest. And some of these trees around here are 200 years old, and they can give some fabulous quality cork, which is used um, for uh, natural wine corks of the best quality. Well, these amazing cork forests in Portugal um, are actually also uh, a fabulous um, carbon sink because these trees, they'll grow for 200 years or more. And whilst with other wood products, you have to cut the tree down and that ends its purpose of absorbing carbon, these cork trees carry on going forever. So you're just removing the bark and meanwhile, the tree every year for its entire lifespan is sucking carbon out, carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And all that's left over is the cork bark, which is processed into cork to make a biodegradable product. So it's really the perfect sustainable product for the uh, 21st century and beyond. So the cork they harvested is put on this truck, which goes to the factory. And in the factory, we're going to process it into things. We're going to granulate it, chop it. Uh, so we're going to now have a look at the factory to see how it's being processed. So after the harvest, we went to a factory where they process it. Turns out there are three different ways to process the cork. Natural, conglomerated, and expanded cork. Here Charles explains the difference using the classic wine stopper as an example. So you saw in the forest that we um, took off those big planks of cork off the trees. Well that's the first step into making natural wine corks. So these, those big planks we saw in the forest are now cut up into strips. Um, so this would be the outside of the tree and here would be the inside of the tree. Then to make a natural wine cork, which is the um, the most premium kind of wine cork. You literally have a punch and it punches through the cork and pushes the cork out the other side. And at the end of it, you have a natural cork. So natural corks are the most prized kind of corks. And you see a very, a very premium um, wine cork looks like this with almost no imperfections on the surface of it. So to get really good quality wine corks, you need to have really good quality cork. Once you've made the wine corks, you have all this leftover cork. What happens to this is it gets granulated, turned into granules, and then those granules can be glued together to make, um, either to make boards like this one, which you see for flooring or for notice boards, or they can be made into agglomerated wine corks. So an agglomerated wine cork is much more uniform than a natural wine cork. But of course, it isn't 100% natural because the granules have to be glued together 
to make agglomerated cork. What's left after all of that cork has been used for agglomerated cork and natural cork is rotten bits of cork which no one really wants. So for example, the branches of the trees which have been trimmed like this one. And this is what we've come to see today is how all this waste cork, which can't be used for anything else, how it can be turned into an amazing insulation material, which is expanded cork. And then this bark can then be agglomerated using a different process to make expanded cork. Now one of the key differences about this expanded cork is that unlike um, the agglomerated cork here, the expanded cork is made in a different way. The um, resin, which is present in the cork uh, branches itself, is used to bind the expanded cork granules um, together. So this is 100% natural product, just like natural corks are. So you would say this thing is cool, 100% natural, straight yeah. from the bark? Yeah. This one less because you need glue. It's cool yeah. that it's left over, but you need yeah. glue to put it together. Yeah. And this thing is also 100% natural because the resin in the cork tree glues yeah, it all together. that's exactly right. And what's amazing about this whole process is that from the bark that comes off the tree, not one grain is wasted. It can all be used in different ways. And in fact, the dust that's produced when you're doing this process is then used to make energy for the factories to be able to um, treat the cork itself. So it's a completely circular process. So we're gonna have a look at the factory. Let's go. <laughs> Here you can see the factory. At this one, they make expanded cork. The one that is granulated, but processed 100% natural because the resin in the tree is the glue. The factory looks peaceful from up here. However, the factory is loud. Shredders, steam, compressed air flowing around. You can't hear anything on camera. So we got a tour from the boss, very nice guy. And I'll narrate the process for you once we get inside. So let's start at the beginning of making expanded cork, the raw material. They have mountains of cork. So here we are at an expanded cork factory. Uh, expanded cork is one of the most amazing insulation materials I've ever come across. 100% natural and a fantastic insulator. And what's one of the really great things about it is we use for expanded cork the really rough bits of cork that no one else wants to use. So this cork I've got in my hand here and this massive pile you can see behind me is scraps of cork that essentially no one else wants to use. And here at the factory we're going to see how we're going to take this cork, granulate it, sort it so we get the best bits that we need to make the insulation expanded cork board and then make it into big blocks um, which can then be cut into sheets of expanded cork to insulate your home or whatever else needs insulating. So let's go and visit the factory. So first step is to filter out the piles of cork because all the cork is left over and mixed with sand and stones. But also wood from the cork tree itself can still be stuck on the bark. So they throw it into big machines that shake it and get the rough dirt out and then the shredder that chops it into small granules. They're transported on screws and conveyor belts all with different systems to filter out unwanted materials. At this point, it's a mix of different granule sizes of cork, so they also separate them. The small ones can be used for expanding and will be used for biomass. The large ones will go back in the system to shred again, and the medium size continues the process. This is what the granules look like after sorting and shredding. Then they go into this beast, the boiler. Here they use the biomass leftover from before to heat it up, and produce steam from water. He mentioned that the boiler was installed in the 70s and still running, very basic and durable machine. And the room down here is fired up every morning at 7 until midnight, it's a thousand degrees in there. Yeah, we didn't go in. Then it goes to the next step, the core of the process, the actual pressing. Here the cork granules go into a big metal mold. In this case the shape of a big rectangular block. Once the mold is full, they close it, heat it up, and with steam and heat, the cork expands, and the resin comes out. Meanwhile, it's pressed together with a big hydraulic press. The process of filling the mold, heating it up, and taking it out is about 20 minutes. And once it comes out, the block have a deep brown color because of the heat. The cork itself doesn't burn, but just turns dark. But inside these blocks, you can actually see a few little red glowing things. 
These are little pieces of wood that didn't manage to filter out. And they did burn and turn into charcoal. But the amount of wood is minimal, so it's not really a problem. And from there, the block is cut it open so it can cool down faster. And water is sprinkled on top. At this point, you have a solid block of expanded cork, naturally glued together with just heat and pressure. These blocks will rest outside for a few weeks, so they get rid of all the tension inside. And then to the final step, cutting. Here the blocks are brought in and cut to size. The blocks feel solid, but are lightweight. The popular purpose for them is insulation, since it has a high R value. But it also has a few other cool properties, as for instance you saw before, the wood burned and the cork doesn't, so it's very fire resistant. And it's a 100% natural material, which is very unique for an insulator. Some people use it between walls, roofs, floors, or even directly on the outside. The application defines the thickness you need, thinner for walls and thicker for the roofs. So this is the end result, uh, sheets of expanded cork. You can have them in different sizes and thicknesses. And we want to use this for our rune as an insulation material. So we need to figure out what's the size we want, what's the thickness. So we need to do some calculations and measurements. But uh, yeah, we're going to see more about that later on. Alright, so that was it for this video. If you already want to see the next one for next week, make sure to subscribe on uh, Patreon. If not, you'll just see us here next week, same channel, same time. Thanks for watching.